This is fortification part four, strengthening. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for your love. I thank you that you show us and teach us in the Christian kingdom how to be fortified and then how to fortify others. So I just pray that you would touch the hearts and minds of your people, open up every ear and every eye that with an understanding that they may see what the Spirit is saying to the church. Father, I just bless your name. I pray that you be glorified. Holy Spirit, have your way in me as I preach this message and yield myself to you. Be glorified. In Jesus' name, the potentate king, the one that lives forever and ever, everlasting father. Amen and amen. Strengthening. Jesus Christ is our rock. We left off with Psalms 1914. Understand that, that Jesus is our rock. To be strengthened or strength means to empower and increase in vigor. Christ does that for us. He empowers us. He is our strength. And we learned that in the last session. How does he empower us then? The first thing we see is through prayer and instruction of God's word. By prayer and instruction of God's word. Luke 22. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you. That he may sift you as wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith fell not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. He said, but I have prayed for you. So one way that Jesus knew how to strengthen the apostle Peter when Satan wanted to sift him as wheat uh, was to pray for him. Now I'm sure because he is Jesus Christ, he knew what to pray. So in our in our minds, when we think we know what to pray for someone, we may not know how we ought to pray. That's where the Spirit of God comes in. Not by man's words, but by God's words of wisdom through the Spirit. He says, but I have prayed for you because Satan desires to sift you as wheat. In John 17, he prayed for us likewise. Not just the apostles, but those of us who would hear through the apostles' word, the first 12 disciples. Why? Because he desires to sift us as wheat even as he desired to sift Peter as we to God Satan knows who God is placing in position and he wants you to know that he had to pray for us just like he prayed for Peter and we've got to understand that prayer strengthens the brethren and it keeps Satan from sifting them as we Luke 22 31 to 32 he says I pray for you that your faith fail not. How many pray for people that their faith fail not? Now, I have to admit that I haven't. But what I have prayed is from the Apostle Paul, where I pray that God will strengthen you by his spirit in the inner man. That's what I pray for the body of Christ when I pray for them. 
And this is a good understanding for whoever prays for the body of Christ that their faith fail not. So whoever is getting the revelational understanding that when you pray for a believer, you've got to pray for them in a way that their faith does not fail in times where Satan is trying to sift them. Don't let their faith fail, Lord. They're in a time and a season of sifting by Satan. Don't let their faith fail, Lord. See, you got to pray for the believers that their faith fail not. What does that mean? That they lose their faith in Christ. That they lose their faith in God. That they lose what they believe. What they've been taught. And the Bible says, he's telling the apostle Peter, when you are converted, I need you to strengthen the brethren. That's why you got to pray. God, by your spirit in their inner man, strengthen thy brethren. Strengthen them, Lord. Strengthen them. When you are converted, when you have the spirit of God, when you reach that level in Christ, converted here, means being baptized in the spirit you've got to understand that you need the power of god when satan is sifting you in your life that means there's some trouble that came because satan went to god like in job's life or in Um, mm, I know his name, Joseph's life. It's like I had a mental block at that moment. I couldn't think of his name. But in Joseph's life, uh, there was a sifting. Why? In each person's life, God allowed Satan to sift. Why? Because he was proving a point. Now, Satan is desiring to sift a believer, to sift you as wheat. When I think of that, you, you some people do. They want to sift you as wheat. There was a situation in my life that I believe because of reading and studying Job, I understood and I understood well that Satan went before God to give him, to get permission to touch me. So when hardships, when you're in the pots of life, when hardships are in your life and Satan is sifting you and you know, <laughs> it's not by what you did. You've got to understand that there are situations where Satan will go to God and he will want to sift you. And God will give him permission. Why? Because Satan uses lies before God. And God says, mm, have you considered my servant so-and-so? Have you considered my servant so-and-so? Because see, he told, he told Job, he told, he told Satan, God told Satan, have you considered my servant Job? What is it when God calls your name? Have you considered my servant, Nicole? Have you considered my servant? And call out your name. Because this is what Satan does. He goes before God and accuses. And so what God does is say, mm, have you considered my servant? And I need you to put your name there because sometimes the issues come into your life and you don't understand why they're there. Well, you must understand he is desiring to sift you as wheat and he has went before God and God says, have you considered my servant? Put your name there.
So he's saying, when you are converted, this is the apostle Peter about to be an apostle. Christ is about to leave and he is giving him instructions. When you have been baptized, when you have power from on high, then you convert your brothers and sisters. You strengthen them. He's saying, I, I, strengthen them. Strengthen them. Strengthen them. Strengthen them. Let's turn to Isaiah. Isaiah, the 35th chapter. Isaiah, the 35th chapter. Isaiah 35, 3. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. He says, Strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. We've got to strengthen the weak hands. This is what the what Jesus was telling the apostle Peter. He says, when you get to that place of conversion, I need you to strengthen the body of Christ. That's what strengthen your brethren mean. Strengthen the body of Christ, those that you come in their pathway, those that come under me. I need you to strengthen them. Jesus is telling him, those that believe in me, strengthen them. They need the spiritual strength that you have now. They need to be baptized in the spirit. They need to be converted. I need you to strengthen them. And the feeble knees, those that believe, but they, they not believe it fully. Their walk is causing them to wobble. It's causing them to almost faint. You know, your, your, your knees, they give in and you start to fall. He's saying, you've got to strengthen them. You've got to confirm some of them. Get them back on the right path. If you give them the strength of their spirit, their knees won't be so feeble. Strengthen ye the weak hands. Strengthen ye the weak hands. Now we're talking about holy things here. Because see, we can do the natural thing at another time. And we strengthen the natural. We send our kids to school. They learn. They do right from wrong. We discipline them so they won't end up in prison. The Christ is doing the same thing for us. When he told the apostle Peter, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. What do you think we're doing for the spiritual man? The same thing we do for the natural man. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews, the 12th chapter.
verses 1 through 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. He says, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. You've got to understand that this is a sifting as Satan. This type of sifting, he said, will cause you to be wearied in faith in your mind. The Bible tells us that we must put on our spiritual armor of the mind. What do we have to do? Gird our minds about with truth. That means we must believe the word of God beyond the approach of sinners. Beyond the reproach of sinners. Those that contradict the word of God. He says those type of people in your life will weary your mind and cause you to faint. That means you're weeble knees and you're a fall away from God. You'll begin to have them weeble knees. You'll be sinning, losing your spiritual strength at the same time trying to believe God. You've got to choose a side and understand that sinners that contradict the word of God will cause you to be wearied and faint in your mind. He says, lift up thy hands which hang down. So, let's go to that verse, verse 12. He says, wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. This is what we heard in Isaiah. And make straight paths for your feet. Make straight paths for your feet. Lest they which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. He's saying you've got to set a straight path for yourself. The path that Christ has set, you've got to walk it. But he's telling the leaders. To, to make their path straight. Because if they are feeble knee, knees, if they are not spiritually set yet. Those that are lame. Those are not spiritually strong. Those that are lame are not spiritually strong. Those will turn off the path that God has set. So you've got to make the pathway straight. And you've got to strengthen them that they stay on that straight path. And they say, and lift up their hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Make an even path for them. Make it straight. Some people don't like the way I preach that because I get it from the word of God and I won't stray. And I'm trying to teach you how to stay on that straight and narrow path that he set for us. Trying this and that is not going to help you stay saved. Trying this and that makes your paths curved and you will veer off to the left and to the right. And God is saying, I need you to stay straight. I need you to be straight. Get on that path of evenness that I set for you. Remember the contradiction of sinners against himself. He said, these things 
will cause your mind to faint and be wearied. And God is telling us as leaders, we have to strengthen them. He says, we got to lift up the hands that hang down and the feeble knees make their strength, their path straight. We've got to teach this sound doctrine. We've got to teach it in a way that they will stay on the path that is set. We've got to teach them how to have courage when they go out into the street. And they're around sinners that their path won't veer off. That which they've been taught. And it is their choice, but they need the courage of God. But you got to understand, this is why Jesus is saying to the apostle Peter before he is converted. Before the baptism of the Holy Ghost. See, he knows the path of our life. And he's saying, when this happens, I need you to strengthen your brethren. Why? Because they do in the state. Satan is going to do the same thing to them. He's going to sift them as wheat. And here the book of Hebrews is saying, for consider him that endured such contradiction. He's saying, consider Christ. Consider Christ. He considered, he endured contradiction of sinners against himself. So it wasn't just sinners, but it was religious spirits. He called them a generation of vipers. And so this we must understand. These men and women will weary your mind. And you will faint. So God has to place some that will strengthen you, strengthen your mind, lift up your hands, keep you from, from, from wobbling off the path because you lame a little bit. He says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. Can you fall from the grace of God? According to Hebrews 12, 15, look diligently lest any man fall of the grace of God. You can fall from grace. I, I, I don't want to hear another preacher preach that you can't now. Because we hear it here in Hebrews 12, 15. We got to look diligently. We have to look diligently. Lest we fall from grace. We need to study some more. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and therefore many be defiled. Teaching the truth sometimes can be a hard thing. I heard the words of one man say, I, I didn't know preaching can cause. So many problems for a person. When you teach sound doctrine, welcome to where the prophets and the apostles of old. Welcome to the higher levels. Now, we do have preachers that preach this, but now I've never talked against them before. I listen to them because they are, they are my leaders. But now God is unveiling some truths 
So we can never say a man can fall from can't fall from grace now. We have Hebrews 12, 15. He says, if we don't lift up the hands that hang down, if we don't confirm the feeble needs, if we don't make straight paths for the feet, then the lame will turn away. And there, there he's using the word lame, but he's not talking about the physically lame. He's talking about the spiritually lame. He says, if you don't do these things, the lame will be turned away. And he's saying, but I need you to do these things so that they may be healed. So, so they won't turn away, that they may be healed. This is the purpose of strengthening. And some of them don't like it and they will lash back. I understand. I understand not being a leader and walking a straight path and being lashed at for a lie. I understand both sides. But God is saying, this is why I'm telling you. This God is saying, this is why I'm telling you. Look diligently. Be sober is what look diligently means. Be sober, lest any man fall of the grace of God. So there is a failing, a falling away. To fail means to fall away. That means this man is not like the other men. The lame ones. They're not going to stay with God. They're not going to get back up and come back in alignment with him. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna veer off the path and never come back to him. They are gonna fall from the grace of God. God has never given me an answer for that type of thing. And so you ponder those things like Mary ponders in her heart. I ponder things that I have been taught. Until God bring me face to face with it. Then I change how I teach. Why? Or what I say. Why? Because he's opened up the truth to me. So now we've got to understand. They can fall from the grace of God. And bitterness. The root of bitterness can spring up and trouble them. He says, and there be many defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Now we understand he's putting fornication and Esau in the same sentence. Esau gave up his birthright. And he's saying that, <laughs> so the fornicator is too. Who for one more so of meat sold his birthright. He was hungry. And he gave up something that was supposed to have been his. I'm not that hungry. See, people can misinterpret how you're thinking and what you're saying. So when you hear what they misinterpreted to, you've got to tell them the truth. Hey, you got that wrong. So let me, let me let you understand that God is wanting us to strengthen the believer. If you're a leader of any sort, you've got to strengthen them because they can fall away from grace. It says fail of the grace of God. That means fall away. I just want you to understand that fail means fall away. Contradiction of sinners. 
People who don't believe the word of God with a true heart. They will weary your mind and cause you to faint. That means fall away from the truth of God's word, of what God has taught you. Ephesians 3, 16. Ephesians 3, 16. Ephesians 3, 16 through 17. This is the prayer that I was telling you about earlier. And the Apostle Paul is praying. Now, at this point, the Apostle Paul has been converted. Remember, he used to kill the believers as Paul, the captain of the Roman guard. And then God shed a light on him. Jesus shed a light on him, knocked him off his beast, and now he is strengthening the believer. And this is the Apostle Paul. He is saying that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts. By faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. He said you need this spiritual strength. So I'm praying for you that by the spirit of the living God, he would strengthen you in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. He is not trying to make you leave your faith. He is not weary in your mind that you faint and fall from grace. What he is doing is showing you that you need the spirit of the living God. He strengthens you in the spirit and he keeps you strong from God. He keeps you on that path of straightness. And your mind won't be wearied. He says that you will be rooted and grounded in love. And that you will have the faith that the enemy who is trying to sift you is trying to pull you away. But then why? I just want to tell you why. Because the Apostle Paul said, by doing this in verse 16 and 17, you will be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the heights. And you will know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. He wants you converted. He wants you converted. He's saying, I need to pray this for you so that you will be filled with the fullness of God. And that's being baptized. That's being converted. Having the spirit of the living God on the inside. Colossians, the first chapter. Verse 9. This is the Apostle Paul again. After his conversion, he's strengthening the brethren of Colossae. He's saying, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to, to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. See the importance of your spiritual life as well as your natural life. But if your spiritual life is in order, it will cause you to walk on the path of righteousness in your natural life that God wants you to be on. Because understand this, the soulish room is connected to the natural life. 
It is also connected to the spiritual life. But if your spirit is dead, it's not connected with God. There's no influence from his spirit. There's no influence from him. You will always fulfill the lust of the flesh in the simple life. Which weakens your spirit and keeps it dead. Now let's go on. He says that you might walk worthy. This is why he's praying this for you and me. This is why he prayed it for Colossae. This is why we must pray that God will fill the believer, strengthen them with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He didn't say in all natural understanding. He didn't say in all man's wisdom, but he said in the wisdom of the spirit, the knowledge of God. He says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. See, you don't want to please everybody. You want to walk worthy of the Lord and let that be pleasing to him. See, the apostle Paul understands now I can't live to please myself. I can't live to please this one. I can't live to please that one. I got to live to please God. And so he causes us to be strengthened in the inner man. And we pray these things. Certain leaders pray certain ways that you might be strengthened and stay on the path, not just in their presence, but out of their presence. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. This is the purpose of strengthening you. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Do you know his glorious power is the spirit of God? The spirit of God wants to strengthen you. He wants to come on the inside of you. He wants you to walk the way God walks so that he can use you at any time. Giving thanks unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. All these things come when we pray to strengthen you. See, God teaches us how to be strengthened, and He strengthened us. Now we strengthen you, those that are converted. So you got to make sure you have a true conversion. I have a true conversion. Even though there was some controversy around it. But that was Satan sifting. Making me doubt. Trying to make me feeble. Weakening me. And we will give all thanks to God and to the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. The kingdom of his dear Son. He said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Beloved, the one he loves, and in whom we have redemption through his blood. We have redemption through his blood, this dear son. Even the forgiveness of sins. This dear son keeps us alive to God. It keeps our soul connected to our live spirit so that we won't go into the, to the natural man where the soulless realm is also connected. So therefore we can deny those soulless desires that don't please God, that only please us in our flesh. Well, on the other hand, we connect it to the spirit, which connects and makes our spirit come alive. And our spirit is strengthened. So therefore our flesh is weakened. Uh, we're killing off the flesh. Uh, but we're making alive the spirit in the flesh. Mm. 
And we must understand that we need to be strengthened with might according to his power. Not according to the power that I could give you. Not according to the power that someone else can give you. But according to the power of God. And so we're going to end here. And I have one more message on being strengthened to fortify. Fortification. This is what God is saying. And although I got this message last year in fasting and praying, I'm preaching it to you today. This is a season, this is an hour where fortification is needed. Strengthening the weak hands and confirming the feeble knees, cause them to walk upright. So Heavenly Father, I pray for the believer that you will continue to move by your spirit in their life, uh, that they want to stay connected to the spirit uh, and give over and kill, destroy, abhor the flesh and its desires and lusts thereof. That the desires they have with the spirit would outweigh the desires of the flesh. See, the desires of the flesh say, please, man. But the desires of the Spirit say, please, God. And so, Father, I pray that you would continue to move by your Spirit. Move and strengthen the believers through your word that you teach and preach through me and other, belief and other leaders of the Christian faith. Thank you for clearing up a matter. You clear up things very well. And Father, I pray that those that will contradict the word of God be removed from the lives of the believers or that the believers will stand strong on their faith and don't become lame and weak and follow the wrong path. Be glorified in the lives of the believers as you are strengthening them, as you are fortifying in the spirit. And be glorified, Lord, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, Jesus Christ, be glorified. Thank you for showing us how to strengthen in the spirit and the faith in the kingdom of God and in the kingdom of Christ where we come from the world all bloody all blackened in spirit to be washed to be cleansed to be strengthened that satan can no longer tr tread upon us or sift us as wheat so father have your way in the mighty name of jesus christ your beloved son, the potentate king who lives forever and ever, the everlasting father. Amen and amen.